thanks to the supporters of channel member Eduardo Franco. I don't really want to talk about what's happened over the last few days. Instead, I think it's time to focus on continuing this rebuild, bring myself in some shiny new wonder kids and basically try not to cry. It's fine. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 8 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, it is our season review and transfer special. After what happened that none of it, we've agreed. I think we can all agree we're not going to talk about what happened. We had a season, as you can see, we didn't win any trophies and that's fine. We weren't supposed to win any trophies. We never thought winning trophies was realistic. We never hoped and dreamed. We never had the rug pulled out from under us. It is fine. And ultimately, we did join the club partway through the season and do quite well. Quite, If I remember, I think we finished quite high in the league. We had a decent Champions League run. And uh, I think we should be pretty happy with our first not even full season here in Germany. These are the signings. The signing of the season has gone to Ribeiro, which I think is fair. He had a little bit of an iffy start. I remember after a couple of matches, I was talking about potentially needing to bring in another goal goalkeeper over the top of him. And maybe we still will. Um, but... A goalkeeper was definitely needed and he, once he broke into the team, was a very important part of that team. Obviously, Big Kev as well came in, scored a decent number of goals as our big, I mean, did I mention big, big centre forward? And there were a few guys who came in before I arrived who uh, are on here as well. But on the whole, I think we had a pretty decent January transfer window. We were supposed to finish in the top half. We were sort of mid-table when I arrived. The board were just like, that's fine. Just finish top half. It's fine. As you can see, as you no doubt remember, we finished second in the league. Nearly won it. Still stings. Only 95% attendances, which is a little bit of a surprise. Just purely based on my own experience of trying to get a ticket to go and see Dortmund this season. I know I'm supposed to go and see every team I manage in non to Legend. I'm glad I've never put a time frame on how quickly after I start managing them I have to do that because I don't know that I'm going to be able to get there before the end of this season. We might be looking at the start of next season. 800 quid for me to go this weekend, just for me. 800 pounds for flights, two nights in a hotel and a ticket. I I mean, I love match day vlogs. I love travel. I ain't spending 800 pounds for just me to go to Germany for a couple of days, to what people on my Twitch chat have described as Dortmund being basically German Sheffield. Aside from going to the match, there's not a lot I'm going to do while I'm there anyway. I'll go there, go to a football match, eat some sausage. Cut that. I'm not spending £800 on it. Watch this space, but that does surprise me. Perhaps I need to go in the future when there's gaps in the stadium and tickets are a little bit more reasonably priced. Uh, if we have a look at the finances stuff, um, obviously we are one of the biggest clubs in Europe, one of the biggest clubs in the world, and all our finances continue to grow. Sponsorships are up. Broadcast revenue is up significantly. All these other bits, competition prize money, these are all going to be helped by a run to the Champions League final and a second place finish in the league. We sell a lot of merch. I mean, I've got two Dortmund shirts behind me there. Carrier sells more shirts than anybody. And then a couple of the boys who are probably going to be moving on this summer if I have my way. Smithrow, Addy Emmy, Schlotterbeck could all be on the chopping block. This, uh, this could be a new look Dortmund team as we enter into next season. And this is our team of the year, Lafont. Played just enough games to be in there as the goalkeeper. He'll never be my first choice keeper again. Back four of Hartmann, Schlotterbeck, Mormon, and Borches. We probably move on Hartmann and Schlotterbeck. If not now, then in the next year or so. Maui and Martel in midfield. Martel's kind of already been replaced. And then Marrera, Carrier and Herrera. Herrera joins us permanently this summer behind Adiemi up front. But of course, we already have Big Kev as the replacement for Adiemi long term. The awards, Fans Player of the Year goes to Carrier. The young Player of the Year goes to Mormon. Those two players are the same age. I, and Mormon has a better average rating. I don't know what he has to do to be Player of the Year over Carrier. I guess he just needs to have his name recognition. We already know about signing of the season. Top scorer was Marrera with 17 goals. Hartman... Um, got the most assists at 15. A lot of them were coming from corners. Uh, Marrera also got most man of the matches. Mormon highest average rating. And of course, developed into a real set-piece threat as the season went on. And Schlotterbeck has our most passes completed per 90 minutes. That feels low. 
that number just feels low. And um, we also set some uh, some club records. Hartman's 15 assists was the highest in a season in the history of the club. Dukic, as we already know, was our all-time record signing. And we also brought in our record transfer for he received at £98 million. And this happened before I arrived. But Julian Duranville uh, going to Manchester United for £98 million back in the summer. I guess this is where it all started to go wrong for them because he was obviously a key player for them that maybe they didn't adequately place until January when I was here and I adequately replaced him. So it's starting to make a little bit more sense now and also explains why there was so much money for me to spend in January. The manager timeline describing me as a big spender. I take offence to that remark. Um, But there is your all-time best 11, which is fairly meaningless because we've been here less than a year. Um, Give me a couple of years and we'll start to make some impact on that all-time best 11. So what do the board want from me this coming season? They want me to continue signing players under the age of 23 for the first team whilst developing young players. Love all that. Love a bit of youth development. They seem to... Oh no, down here. They are still looking for me to sign players to sell for a profit. So as I've learned at my peril over the years, that means we are actually going to have to sell them at profit. It's not enough to bring them in knowing that we could sell them for a profit. We are actually going to have to sell some players. We can't just keep them all forever and build a super duper wonder team. They want me to spend the original transfer budget just like they did last year. It's a much smaller initial transfer budget this time around, but they want me to spend it again and they want us to maintain the best youth system in the country whilst growing the club's reputation. I mean, we did just about all we could to grow the club's reputation last year, aside from a couple of other matches maybe going our way when they when they didn't. They want us over the next five years to develop the best youth system in the world. It's just, I mean, what impact can I have on that? Next to zero. Invest in your youth setup then, chaps, uh, whilst being competitive in the Champions League and, of course, qualifying for the Champions League again. So not even necessarily looking for us to win the Bundesliga for another three or four years. We obviously won't be happy if we don't pick up some kind of silverware next year. We want a Bundesliga or a Champions League or both next year or else I'll be very, very sad because that will be the first season of the first season of the entire save where we wouldn't have improved on what went on the previous year if we don't pick up a trophy this coming year with Dortmund. Let's uh, tell the boys that we want to qualify for the Champions League. They're happy. There doesn't seem to be many of them have turned up for this meeting. Where is everybody? Goodness me. Oh, they've gone on their end of season break. Glad we had the meeting then, lads. Um, training camp destination. We are going to go to, there's no option to go to Burton and just hang out there. Um, so I guess we'll go to Austria and uh, that is your season review stuff done. So money-wise, we've got £55 million to spend and lots of spare wage budget. So that wage budget, transfer budget can be moved around and give us quite a lot of flexibility there. We, of course, already have a number of young players coming in. We had to spend up the rest of last season's money um, before the season ended. So we've got some good young players coming in. So what I'll probably do is wait for them to arrive and properly look at the squad once they're here before we do anything too significant. Have we got any clauses we can sell to bring some money in? We always like a little bit more money. So let's just sell all the clauses. Bring it, None of these are giving us... a decent amount of money really i mean there's a couple of million i thought that was 72 million there i was about to do a you were going to see me do a backflip in a video which you've never seen before today is not the day but a little bit more money has come in like i say no more than a couple of million in total there and uh, this is what our squad planner looks like currently does this include the new boys it does so the new boys are in there so I think we probably need to move Lafont on. He was our first choice. He's definitely not now. We'll bring in another goalkeeper this summer, whether it'll be to replace Ribeiro or back up Ribeiro. Really depends on what we can find, what's available to us. Um, but I think Hartman probably is going to move on and Van Veen become our starting left back. And then we'll make a decision on Gustavo. The decision will probably be bin him off and then maybe new boy Kayembe will be the backup although he's primarily a right back so perhaps we need another left back in if Hartman leaves and there is interest in Hartman so we're not against him leaving if the money is right 
And then on the right-hand side, our starter will continue to be Borches. He is still young, still has lots of potential. And then we do have the new boy, Kayembe, who can come in and be his backup. He's joining us from Beveren. And then there's a couple of other guys who can play there. And then at centre-back, Schlotterbeck might move on. Again, there's interest from Saudi Arabia. If we get big money offer, we're not going to keep a 32-year-old at the club. But Garcia, definitely part of the plans. Moorman, definitely part of the plans. Um, they're probably going to be our starting centre-back partnership uh, Kosunui I never did work out how to say this guy's name at 31 and a backup we probably move on but Luke is useful because he's natural in two positions so we'd quite like to keep him around and then we've got the new boy Tichy coming in as well um, who would then be our fourth centre back and then in defensive midfield um Obviously, those two uh, other positions, we don't really worry about them. But Dukic, our record signing, still very much part of the plans. Martel, I'm not desperate to push out. But if we get a big offer, we're not going to desperately try and keep him here either as a uh, as a 30-year-old. Um, Nessid, again, he's a two-and-a-half-star player. I'm not desperate to push him out. I don't mind him being a backup for us. Um, but I also don't mind if he leaves. Likewise with Maui. I think this is the area we probably need to strengthen most, this defensive midfield position. Because aside from Dukic and even Dukic is only two and a half star three star this seems to be quite a difficult position to find players for in FM24 let me know in the comments how you're finding it but in all my saves this seems to be the last position that we get to properly like elite level players in they seem really difficult to find we had the same had the same difficulty at Burton if it wasn't for how good our attacking midfield options were, I'd be tempted to switch to a 4-3-3, just go to one defensive midfielder and get some centre mids in. But with Carrier being our best player and natural at attacking midfield and probably taking over in that role permanently from Smith Rowe, it seems like a bit of a silly thing to do, unless we get a stupid offer for Carrier, in which case we might make the switch to the 4-3-3. But Smith Rowe probably moves on. Gonzalez is just a useful utility player in and around the midfield and attacking player area, so we probably keep him around. Likewise, Ozil, just a useful utility player to have. And then we know we're pretty strong up front. Um, Adiemi is still here. We're not going to push him out. Same with lots of others. We're not going to push him out. But there's Saudi Arabian clubs interested. If we get a big offer, he goes. Deda obviously stays. And then we've got um, High Sky Hiski, hi. We're gonna to have to figure out how how we're gonna say this guy's name. All right, so I'm just gonna start calling him Hesky, which means he'll immediately be renamed Emil, and then we're gonna have a young guy called Emil, and nobody's gonna know why. And it's gonna be really confusing if we keep the other Emil at the club as well. We need to learn to say that boy's name, uh, Makoko. He's one of those. Uh, I guess it probably makes sense to keep, although there's interest in him. He is homegrown at club. I think he's not homegrown at club. Would somebody like to explain to me how he's not homegrown at club? He must be homegrown at club. Weird. His idol's Messi, apparently. Seems like a weird thing to have on his professional documents. I really like Messi. All right, Yusufer. Goodness me. Um, and then in the wide areas, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. In the wide areas, we know Marrera's great. Uh, we perhaps need... Another body, if Adiemi and potentially Carrier go, we perhaps need another body for the left-hand side and then on the right. Obviously, Carrier can play there if we bring in another attacking midfielder, which I'm not necessarily looking to do, but it depends what's available. Um, and then Herrera probably is the starter. Um, but Emil, Emil High Sky can play there. As can Adiemi. I mean, we might end up keeping Adiemi. We've obviously got Hazen Begovic who came in last year and is a wonder kid who's a natural out there as well. We've got plenty of good options. So we've got a very, very good core of the squad. It's really a case of if we get big offers for the old players, we let them go. We're not going to push any of them out and then we'll just replace them as they go. And if none of them go... We'll look to bring in another couple of wonder kids to go on top of the ones that are already coming in. It should be a fairly straightforward, by the numbers, Kev Summer. And whenever I've said that in the past, something has gone wrong. So strap yourselves in, boys and girls. This could go anywhere. So it is the 1st of July and our new boys have arrived. And the most exciting thing is this one's very, very good. Um, he's come in with an incredible three and a half stars of current ability and he's probably going to be our starting striker for next season. I think we've uh, 
we've stumbled across somebody quite good there. If we have a look at how that reflects on our squad planner, you can see that he's right up there in the mix with Adiemi and Big Kev, and the squad is looking pretty strong throughout. What we've also done with it being the 1st of January, though, is had a look through the players who were out of contract in the summer, and uh, there are a few of them that... Uh, I don't really want to be offering new contracts to. So I've offered a few of the older guys who I don't want to give new contracts to out. So we might well be losing Schlotterbeck, um, who's talking to Al Nasser. Let's take away the ones that aren't going to happen. Um, this youngster, Andreas Diekniet, um, who is a backup left back who was out on loan last year. Real Madrid are interested in him. So... I think we can probably do better. We'll take £30 million for him without too much argument. Um, a couple of the others are heading out on loans as well. We've also had one of our youngsters make his debut for Germany. And he's got one of the best names in Football Manager. I know we've had Saturday, Sunday before. Um, but this guy is called Nick Jonas Wies, Wies, Wiesweg. Um, but he's born in 2011, which as a, as a father of now teenage or 20 something female children i remember the jonas brothers being huge in 2011 and i feel like he was named literally after nick jonas um but he was out on loan last season at sheffield united got nine goals in the championship made his germany debut recently we're probably going to loan him out again because i don't know that we necessarily need him but he's one who's come through our youth setup that Either we're going to make a lot of money off of or we've got another good striker on our hands there. So um, there's quite a lot of decent young players knocking around. In fact, should we just move them all up into the first team squad? The fact that we've got actual wonder kids knocking around in our youth setup is pretty exciting. A few of these are already the ones that we're trying to get rid of. Yeah, so we can't. Apparently, once they're... Oh, no, not to, not to the B squad. Learn the buttons, Kev. So did I move... Nick Jonas into the right squad. I think I did. Um, North is the guy that we found last season, so he can move up as well. Um, there's another Nick Jonas. We've got two. We've literally got some Jonas brothers. Oh, this is amazing. Is that is that a common first name in Germany? Nick Jonas? I feel like I'm learning so very much. Um, but with all those transfers hopefully on their way out, um, we are going to have a big pile of money to spend. And I don't necessarily know that we need anything. So we're just going to let the transfers out go through, work out how much money we've got, and then come up with a spending plan. I am in no rush to spend money this summer. I think we've got a very good squad. I mean, ultimately, if we'd have had the full season, we'd have won the Bundesliga and we nearly won the Champions League. And it's a young squad that are only going to get better as they get older. So there isn't a huge amount that needs doing to it. Let's see how much money we generate and then go buy a go buy a special boy. So a couple of weeks have gone. We've had a bit of a clear out. Still not everybody has gone. Um, Emil Smith-Rowe is the one that we probably want rid of because he's out of contract next summer. And uh, I don't really want to give him a new big contract. But at the moment, nobody seems interested in taking him. So we'll just keep offering him out. Uh, but everyone else who we wanted rid of has gone. I really have changed my tune from them. We're not going to force anybody out. Uh, Kossin Nui um, went to Al Faya for £25 million. Martel to Porto for £23 million. Schlotterbeck to Al Nasser for £49.5 million. Lafont to Pamplona for £9 million. Gustavo to Al Shabab for £7 million. Hartman to Al Itihad for £17.75 million. Then a bunch of the youngsters have gone out on loan. People keep asking me, Kev, how do you keep sending players to Saudi Arabia for big money? It literally is a case of waiting until their window is open and then using the... Uh, the agent thing. So ask agent about market interest. Usually if a player is on the transfer list and you ask agent about market interest, then you'll get an offer. And if there's a Saudi Arabian club interested, they'll come in. If that doesn't work, occasionally I'll use the intermediary. But um, as you can see, most of them have gone for good money where I wanted him to go. The one we haven't been able to get an offer for is Smith Rowe. But I think that's probably because he's being injured. He's only just recovered from his injury and he wants an extraordinary amount of money as well, which might not be a problem for Saudi Arabia. But all of those transfers out mean we've now got a budget of £236 million to spend and over a million pounds spare in our weekly wage budget. We have started to move towards bringing some new players in. Number one will be Gino Sch 
Schakowsky, as long as this goes through. He's a German international centre-back. He's six foot four, which, as you might be aware of, I'm quite keen on. He's currently at Arsenal. We can pick him up for £51 million. He's been a regular at Arsenal for years, formerly of Leipzig and Schalke. Um, is he a Schalke fan? He's not. He's an Arsenal fan, apparently. Interesting. Um, but he would uh, slot into the Schlotterbeck vacancy at the back really rather nicely. And then we'll just start plugging some of the other gaps as well. We definitely need another goalkeeper. We're going to need another left back. We probably need a right back. Although we might be okay with the two that we've got there. Um, with the new boy coming in, we're probably okay for centre-backs. Although Burton have made an offer for Luque. So we did try and get Homo in exchange, but they weren't interested. Uh, we definitely need a defensive midfielder or two. And then either a winger or, a, or an attacking midfielder. Um, basically, it depends where I end up deciding to play carrier. Although, if Smith Rowe stays, we don't really need either, and Smith Rowe can just see out his contract. He is a club legend, I think. Um, so, I know oh he's only a favoured personnel, but either way, we can let him see out his contract. It's not the end of the world if no one wants to buy him. Um, Addy Emmy is still here and will probably be here for another year, so we don't really need a striker. So, we'll fill those couple of positions that we need to fill, and then I guess it's, it's Wonder Kids Ahoy. Of course, you should probably just disregard everything I just said because as soon as I realised I could go to Bayern Munich and sign Conor Egan finally, I went to Bayern Munich and signed Conor Egan finally. The one that got away, the one we wanted at Burton, Conor Egan is a Dor Dortmund player. And uh, I mean, we've got quite the attack now, haven't we? With uh, with Emil High Sky and Conor Egan, plus Big Kev, we might have to go to a two-striker system of some kind. Um, he's not the only player I've brought in as well. We've also uh, signed Gino Schakowsky, who we were looking at before, to be a new centre-back for us. We've also got Kennedy Ayadeli, who's our new club record signing. We were going to get Homo off of Burton, but then we uh, had this guy pop up who can basically play the same positions, but he's even better. Um, he's 21 years old. He's already got one cap for England. He's a defensive midfielder who can play any of the roles in defensive midfield, can also play centre midfield if we do switch to a system that needs one. And uh, he joins us from Crystal Palace. Um, and then we also have this guy, Samuel Kempf, who is a young goalkeeper, 18 years old, one and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. He was actually just available on a free transfer, just knocking about the place. We've got plenty of money left still. There are a couple more players we're trying to bring in. Stallone von Eijma is someone I tried to bring in before, but he wouldn't sign for me because he was too young. Apparently, he now is willing to sign for me, um, although Paris Saint-Germain are trying to grab him as well, but we'd very much like to bring him in and also another goalkeeper, just literally as a, as a cheap backup goalkeeper. He's not great, but he is cheap and we don't really have an adult backup goalkeeper, although we could go with Kemp or this guy. Um, I am starting to think we might have to have a system that involves two strikers because we've got four that are really good. Adi Emi, Deda, five, because we've got Makoko as well. Now, several of these can play out wide. Obviously, Adi Emi, High Sky, Makoko can all play wide. But I think it's a waste to play a one-striker system with these players. And we've not really addressed the attack in midfield slash wide players position. So I am pondering 4-2-4. Four, four? Would a 4-2-4 four, four be insane? Certainly a diamond probably would be because we've got several really good wingers. But maybe, maybe we'll just train a, a little 4-2-4. A little because then if we played that system and had a look at who our best 11 would be, I mean, that's a good team. That's a very, very good team. I think we're, we're changing the tactic. Well, we've continued loaning out some of our more fringe players, including both of the Jonas brothers, the Nick Jonas brothers, have both gone out on loan for the season um, and a couple of the fringe guys as well. Ozil probably being the one who was most... Uh, most used last season. He's going to spend the season at Juventus. And we have brought in those two other players we were looking at before. So a backup goalkeeper, Matija Pilipovic, and this guy who looks like he's going to be awesome. Still only 17 years old. Stallone Van Eijma is a defensive midfielder who can play anywhere in the central midfield. Two and a half stars of current ability, five star potential. Look at that price already for a 17 year old. He doesn't turn 18 until November. He is going to be 
absolutely incredible. Um, he's probably already our best, if not one of our best midfielders. Him and new boy Kennedy Ayadeli are going to be absolutely fantastic together in central midfield. Um, and then we've also brought in a couple of relatively low cost fullbacks um, just because we needed some fullbacks. So Silvio Colombo um, is a 21 year old Italian under 21 international who's my kind of fullback. He's fast can play anywhere up the left-hand side, has a little bit of potential to improve as well. Not quite as good as Van Veen, uh, but he'll be fine as a rotation option for us. And then Brandon Ferreira, um, who of course we've given the number 10 shirt to, is a 24-year-old Colombian international right back. Again, very, very, very quick. Um, can play further forward as well. He's been at Chelsea for the last couple of years, also previously of Paris Saint-Germain. So he's doing a little bit of a tour, never really been an established starter anywhere. And he's a right back who's come in and accepted the number a 10 shirt so he's got the potential to be a little bit of a wally but again decent option for us at right back and i think that probably completes our squad we've got a little bit of money left still loads of wage budget left so if we wanted to if someone really good became available there is the option to do it and there's probably still players we can move on because we are quite a bloated first team squad if we get some of these fringe players out of the way uh, the first team squad is 31 players deep there's still some of the fringe players that we're trying to get out um, and then there's the likes of I don't know as an example where's Gonzalez I don't know where he fits in if we're going to be playing a 4-2-4 um, but I don't want to get rid of him in case we decide not to play a 4-2-4. And I'm a little bit concerned about Champions League registration, which I don't know. Yeah, so we can't even can't even practice Champions League registration yet. So there might be more of these that we need to move on then. Um, but our, for our best 11, based on what the game thinks on who we've got here at the moment, I mean, that is, that is an 11. And there are some very, very talented players who don't even get into that starting lineup. Mormon, Herrera, uh, Big Kev, Borges, Moreira, Mukoko, Dukic, Gonzalez. These were all regular starters last year. So we've definitely upgraded this team in some really key areas. And I think High Sky and Egan together are going to be the best strike partnership in Europe. They are absolutely going to tear Head the Champions League apart. That is that is a strike partnership right there. And then we've got so many options in the wide areas. We've got some decent midfielders now. I am I am very excited for how this team is coming together. I've got a cup game to play. I'll obviously do that one off camera, um, and then we'll uh, we'll see if there's any more business to be done before Leipzig and Bayer Leverkusen, which will be our uh, our first two matches of the season, which will be in tomorrow's episode. So we'll just jump forward a week, see if anything else happens transfer wise. But I think. We're done. Obviously, there's still three weeks before the window closes, but we're just about out of money. And uh, I mean, I think that's been it's been a productive time. The board must be happy. I've spent my original budget. The board are happy. I know it wasn't the most challenging uh, opposition we could have faced, but we've just won twelve nil. Big Kev got a double hat trick just to put a mark down for the uh, for the new boys who've arrived. It was quite a rotated side, um, and we've uh, we've won our first round in the cup, so that was jolly nice. Now we really will get through to that first day of the season. Well, we've squeezed in one more player and he comes in the form of a puzzle. Adnan Nadzak comes in from Dynamo for £11 million. We're going to play a little game of what on earth position does this guy play? He's a natural centre-back. He is six foot two. Uh, he's only got eight heading, though, which doesn't seem ideal. Don't worry, though. He's also accomplished at left-back, albeit he is right-footed. But he can play right wing-back, but not really left wing-back. He can also play central midfield. And at an absolute push, can play on the right wing as well. He's very fast, quite tall. But uh, what is he? Nobody knows. He was £11 million. He's already played 12 times for Bosnia and uh, just seems like fun, doesn't he, really? So he's in. And I think that probably finishes off our summer because there's not much more money left to spend. Uh, this is going to be our team for the first day of the new season. It it looks spectacular. I am, I am over the moon at this squad that we've put together, this team that we're able to field. And we've got a pretty tough start to the season with Leipzig and Bayer Leverkusen in our first two matches. I think they were third and fourth last season or first and third yeah Bayer what Leverkusen won the league 
Leipzig were sixth, so I don't know what happened last season. Either way, they're two good teams. That will be in tomorrow's episode, and we'll get a real feel for how good our new team is. The media think we're going to finish second. We've got one player in the Dream Eleven, although Big Kev is right up there as one of the best players in the division, so he can't be far away. And, I mean, he's not even going to be starting, so maybe I've got my front two completely wrong. We've got some good strikers, is what I'm getting at. It's going to be a lot of fun this season. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.